morning guys, Aiming Blush. Let's talk about it. Save this video so you can tag all your friends and you can refer back to it later. Um, I'm going to talk to you about why it happens, how you can solve it, how you can prevent it from happening and generally everything you need as a beginner or um, an intermediate resin artist. It is completely normal um, for Amine Blush to present in all brands of resin. It is not specific to one type of brand so let me explain why it's happening. Okay so in Lou's lab let's go back to the science. So your hardener, usually definitely in the resins that I have worked with, all your hardener contains all the chemical components for a successful cure. Now within that there is a chemical called amine and that is the curing agent that you need for your pieces to go nice and hard. So amine reacts with um, moisture in the atmosphere and carbon dioxide and can often present as a bubbly kind of oil slick finish across the surface of your resin. It might look a little bit white in places and it can sometimes look a little bit like cling film on the surface. It is very very frustrating. So I have this piece here and this is for teaching purposes only. It's had multiple layers of resin poured over it because I use it to teach with and I set this up last night and I set it up under an air conditioning unit. I left my windows open for four hours whilst um, the initial cure was happening. Um, I put this little camping heater nearby that was blowing across it. I brought all my plants around my art. I did everything possible to get this resin to fail and it's failed absolutely perfectly and I'll never say that sentence ever again. <laughs> um, but as you can see, I have got this weird slicky kind of finish. I actually quite like it, but we we'll pretend, we'll pretend that we don't want that. Um, and let me show you. So you see all this sort of cellular, I mean, I couldn't have got any more amine blush if I tried. This is what can happen across the surface of your artwork. So when H2O from the atmosphere has a little party with carbon dioxide, when that chemical reaction happens, amine starts to take over. So how can we try and prevent carbon dioxide and H2O affecting our resin pieces when they're curing? It is very simple. You need to keep the temperature modest at the roundabout the point of cure for the particular brand of resin you're using. Most brands, that's between 18 and 23 degrees Celsius. If your temperatures are plummeting or rising, whether you are using speed curing devices excessively, whether you're working in a conservatory or a shed and the temperature drops at night, mm -mm, absolute nightmare. That is going to cause the chemical reaction to escalate. If you are working in a room where you've got lots of chilli plants, lots of house plants, all your plants growing, they give off humidity. You want your humidity to be around about 80%. I never really check that. I just make sure that there is no moisture from plants nearby. And if you've got a kettle boiling in the kitchen or you're cooking dinner or you've just had a shower nearby, all of that moisture is going to cause an amine chemical reaction. So you need to scrap that as well. If you cannot, because most of us, 90% of us are working in our homes, it is not possible to get rid of all the moisture. So what you, what you can do is just simply cover your work with a plastic box just to stop any moisture landing on the surface. Now, I wouldn't cover my resin immediately after I've poured it because the exothermic reaction is still generating which means you might not feel it but you might that there's a lot of heat being generated when exothermic reactions are happening think about when we have our nails done there's a little bit of heat maybe a little bit of a spike that chemical reaction is good because our pieces are curing but the heat is generated and if you've covered it with a plastic box or something like that it doesn't breathe so well so give it half an hour or so just to calm down and then cover it up you can pop a couple of holes in your box to allow for the uh, um allow it to breathe that would be absolutely fine so H2O, CO2, otherwise known as carbonic acid, we need to try and totally eliminate that so our amine chemical components in the hardener can do their job without being under pressure. Now, you don't ever hear very much about this, but there are two different scenarios in the amine world. You can have amine blush and amine bloom. Amine blush tends to come from the H2O and carbonic acid that's formed from the, from the atmosphere that lands on the surface. And then you can get another reaction called amine bloom, which we don't hear very much of, or they're misunderstood for the same things. But that tendly, tend, tends to come from the substrate that you are pouring on. So maybe your surface that's wooden isn't super, super dry. Maybe you've picked... Um, a piece of bark from outside and you're going to do a little scene on it and it's not been dried thoroughly, that too will present slightly different. It's a different type of pattern that forms on the resin. Now, we all experience this often because we all cut corners or forget about something or we've used our heat gun too much, which is creating moisture in the atmosphere. Lots of heat reaches to the atmosphere, the carbon dioxide, the H2O, the moisture it lands back on. So think about the heat that you're using in your artwork as well, how much heat gum, that is very important. Think about those humidity mats, reptile mats, speed curing mats, keep them at a lower temperature rather than speed curing at a maximum temperature, that'll help control the amine. But also what do we do when we have that amine blush on our surface? Because it is incredibly frustrating and most of us will probably give up and think, oh, that's it. It isn't, you can save it. 
If you've kept up this far, you're doing great, nearly finished. So simply, all you're going to do, obviously wear a respirator. I am not for this video, but I am not really sandy. And you're going to take some sandpaper and you're going to abrade the surface and you're going to key the surface as much as you can to get rid of that oily, waxy residue. And when you have done that, your piece is good to cure. Um, you're, you're good to go. Aiming blush is not the same as a surface tension issue, which is a whole nother problem in um, successful curing in the resin world, which I'll do another video on at another time. Um, but yeah, you're just going to abrade the surface so that you can get rid of all that oily, waxy layer, all that amine because it is a chemical reaction so it does need to disappear it doesn't matter how you do it it is a scary frightening process because your piece will go probably very white very dull looking but as soon as you come in with a new layer of resin that will be absolutely fine but you do need to get rid of this waxy layer I'm not going to bore you with all the scientific details of carbonic acid but basically as a very simple term for us lot that are starting out or exploring resin moisture is the biggest culprit keep your pieces around 18 to 23 degrees to cure no sudden changes in temperature no dropping or plummeting in temperature no moisture and if you think you don't know if you can possibly do that then you're just going to cover your pieces with a plastic under the bed storage container not cardboard boxes because the fibers off the box will fall on your work and that will drive you even more crackers so plastic box cover it up if you think the temperatures are likely to change then you can even wrap it up if you want to but just allow your pieces to breathe remember the exothermic reaction needs to do its thing um, and yeah don't panic about it save this video I know it was a long one we can go into more details on a live about this if it's happen fre happening frequently to you there will be a reason why it's not necessarily anything um, a fault with the resin it is simply something we are doing that is wrong